If you found your way to this video, you probably already know that submitting an application slide deck is needed to apply for Idea Advance. In the Idea Advance application guidelines, you'll find a link to a slide deck template. Using that template as a guide, I'll provide some tips to help you create a responsive and compelling pitch. In addition to your application slide deck, you're required to record and submit a narrated version of your application. Your recording can be no longer than seven minutes. One thing to keep in mind as you prepare your slides, this is not an investor pitch. This is a grant application. For this purpose, your pitch should be about how you will use Idea Advance funding to test commercialization approaches and reduce risk in your business model. What key things are critical for you to know and learn about your business model in the coming months? How do you intend to maximize participation in Idea Advance to make headway on your business model? Think about it this way. What do you need to prove to yourself over the next 6 to 12 months to give you confidence that you have a solution that someone's going to pay for? Or another way to think about it, what do you need to do to be more ready for making a pitch for follow-on funding when that time comes in the future? Overall for this application, we want you to cover the following questions. What problem does your innovation address and why does it matter? What do you already know about your business model and how do you know it? And what do you hope to get out of this program in terms of de-risking and advancing your commercialization approach? The slides that follow will give you more specific guidance on tackling these questions. Before I move on, I'll point out the business model canvas on the right side of this slide. It focuses on nine building blocks that are important to all business models. As you put your pitch together, you might want to keep these building blocks in mind to help you prioritize the focus of your idea advance goals and learning. I'll admit there's a lot of text on this slide and the upcoming slides, and that's because these are instructional. For your slide deck, keep it simple and easy to follow. If you load the slides up with too much information, you're going to lose your audience, the review committee. And although not necessary, nobody's going to complain if your slides are visually appealing. The first slide is your first impression, like your 30 second elevator pitch. It gives the reviewers a quick preview before you elaborate in later slides. Here we want four things. One, which stage one track are you applying for? Small business innovation or partnered innovation? Two, a brief company or product overview. What benefits are you offering to what customers to address what needs? Three, your goals for the program. Here I suggest you list a few bullet points. What are some initial business model hurdles you want to clear in the next six to 12 months? And four, team. We don't want your resumes here. Convince the reviewers that you have a team that is motivated and is able to put the time in to get the most out of the idea advance program. As I mentioned earlier, you'll be able to elaborate in more detail on most of these points in later slides. You might actually find it easier to create those more detailed slides first and then come back and summarize the highlights for this slide. If people don't understand the problem you're proposing to solve, they won't understand your solution. On this slide, set the stage by calling out the problem. I suggest you start by zooming in and making it personal. Do you have this problem? or someone you know, put the reviewers in the head of a person who is feeling this pain. Then zoom out. How many people have this problem? What are the impacts of the problem? Money, time, health effects, something else? Try to quantify the broad impact of the problem. Demonstrate that there's opportunity beyond your backyard. Here we want to know about the significance of the problem. In the next slide, I'll talk about the market opportunity, which is different than the problem's significance. Also, if you've talked with people to confirm this is a real problem or have some other edge that gives you credibility on this subject, be sure to highlight it. Once you've identified the problem, briefly tell us about your solution. Don't go too far in the weeds in describing it. You don't have space or time for that. Just hit the highlights. There should be almost a question and answer type rhythm to your problem and solution statements. How is your solution an answer to the specific problem you just described? Now, tell us more about your anticipated customer segment and do your best to quantify the size of the market opportunity. 
When thinking about the customer segment, keep in mind the people who use the product, the end users, might not be the actual paying customers. Envision your company's sales transaction. Do your best to identify the customer segment that will be on the other end of that transaction. Think about the types of organizations that you'll be targeting and the positions of the people who will make purchasing decisions. Tell us why this segment will want to buy your product. What benefits do you bring to them? And if you don't have a high level of confidence that this will be your best customer segment, call that out as an area of idea advanced learning. Once the customer segment is identified, the next step is to provide an estimate of the market size. It's common for people to do market sizing in what's called a top-down approach using the three levels shown on this slide. You could also make estimates using a bottom-up approach, which is usually more desirable but can be harder to do. No matter how you get at it, we're not looking for perfection here. Participation in the program is likely to help you develop a more evidence-based market sizing estimate. Now tell us about the competitive landscape. How are people solving the problem now? If there are competitors already on the market, how is your innovation better? What advantages do you have that will make it difficult for others to compete? It's a red flag when someone says there are no competitors. If there aren't products on the market that you consider to be directly competing, address indirect competition. What workarounds are people using to get by? How do you improve upon that? A good way to approach this section about operational elements and benefits is to start with a diagram showing how you think you fit into the sales ecosystem. Imagine your product is ready to sell and think about what needs to happen to get it in the hands of the buyer. What do you envision the distribution path will look like? What partners do you imagine will be needed? The diagram doesn't need to be fancy or overly detailed. Draw it out on a whiteboard and use a picture of it for this slide if you like. You might have noticed I used words like think, envision, imagine when talking about this. The review committee understands that you don't have definitive answers right now. That's the point of the program. Be sure to call out areas of uncertainty as opportunities for idea advanced learning. You'll also want to cover potential revenue streams in this section, maybe on a second slide. Do you think revenue will come from transactional sales of your product, from subscriptions, from licensing, or something else? Revenue streams and methods of payment can be sources of unexpected innovation in business models. What do you hope to learn about them? If you're applying for the Partnered Innovation Track, include a slide that specifically addresses your partnership need and highlights your related idea advanced learning intentions. Keep in mind that a partner for this application is more than just a hired consultant to help you get some operational tasks done. To qualify for this track, your partner should be aimed at customer acquisition for scalable growth. Tell us about your current or planned engagement with such a partner. What do you need to do to vet and onboard the partner in a tangible way? Be sure to include at least one partnership development milestone in your application. The Impact Goals section is where you provide up to three goals you wish to accomplish through participation in Idea Advance. What key objectives do you have for reducing risk on your path to commercialization? Think about the areas of learning you identified as you prepared the earlier slides. Where is your confidence in the business model the most shaky? What are the critical gaps? What few objectives will help you get the most of the Idea Advance programming and funding? Don't be subtle here. State the objectives clearly and tell us why they're important. Now that you've identified your key objectives, tell us about some key steps you'll take to achieve them. Chart out some incremental milestones and make them tangible and quantifiable. If your milestones are too vague and without benchmarks, how will you know you've completed them in a way that's meaningful to your understanding of your business model? Here's some examples. Do you want to conduct at least 10 interviews to gain insight on your revenue streams? Do you have milestones that are relevant to a partnership? Or do you want to obtain one letter of commitment from a beta testing site or pilot customer? Or will the things you learn in Idea Advance help you make a case for applying for a specific follow-on grant or other financing? Also, be sure to propose timing for your milestones. 
Use a table, Gantt chart, timeline, or other visual to express this. This slide about your team is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't say much here. Basically, who have you assembled to participate in the program, and how will this team manage its time to get the most out of it? And don't forget to note the UW affiliation of at least one team member. And the final piece of your application is to provide a list of how you will use the Idea Advance funds. This doesn't have to be an itemized list of every single expenditure you anticipate, but be specific enough to allow the review committee to see how you intend to fund your vision. One way to do that is to correlate the budget with your list of milestones. For example, to help us achieve milestone one, we will allocate $5,000, which will allow us to travel to the such and such conference to conduct customer discovery interviews focused on X, Y, and Z. For milestone two, we are budgeting $3,500 for such and such activities and so on. This slide summarizes some of the things previously mentioned in this recording. In short, I remind you that this is not an investor pitch and that you should focus on prioritized learning goals and milestones that will help you reduce risk in your business model. Shown on the right side of the slide are links to recorded applications from a few teams that were accepted into last year's Idea Advance cohort. Note that we have a new shorter time limit this year, so you are limited to seven minutes or less. Here are some quotes from last year's review committee that demonstrate some common application weaknesses. I won't read through them now, but you should be sure to take a look at them when you have a chance. I'll remind you that the application deadline is July 21st. A link to the detailed application guidelines can be found among the Idea Advance information on the CTC website. Be sure to follow the instructions for submitting your application slide deck using our grant application portal. Don't forget to include a five to seven minute narrated version, including a link that allows the review committee to easily access your recording without jumping through permission hoops. If they can't click on the link and immediately get to your video, assume they aren't gonna see it. On the right side of this slide, I show the criteria the review committee will be using to evaluate your application. This can be found on the application guidelines as well. At the end of the day, keep in mind that you aren't doing this for us. You're doing it for you and your business. When in doubt, ask yourself, what do you need to prove to convince yourself to take the next step? What steps can you take to reduce risk as you try to determine if this is a business that will make money? And finally, please don't hesitate to reach out to us with questions that arise as you put your application together. We're happy to provide feedback.